Good evening from us at BBC One. Matthew watching with you live. So now with decisions made and results awaited, only one question remains. How long are you staying up for? It's five to ten, and with millions of you having cast your votes, the polls are about to close. The arguments of the campaign are over. The counting is about to start. So, let election night begin. A very good evening to you. Welcome to our election night studio, your destination for unrivaled coverage over the next 10 hours as we discover whom you've chosen to walk through that famous door in Downing Street. Last time round, Boris Johnson was Prime Minister. Jeremy Corbyn led the Labour Party. We were still in the European Union and no one had heard of coronavirus. Today, of course, the political landscape is very different and the leaders of all the main parties have changed. Sir Keir Starmer cast his vote this morning. Only four Labour leaders have ever been elected Prime Minister. Has he done enough to seal the deal with the British people? And can he lead Labour to its first victory in nearly 20 years? Rishi Sunak is the fifth Tory Prime Minister in quick succession. He surprised the country with a snap election and has been fighting hard to hang on to power after the Tories' 14 years in charge. But. Can he cross Jeremy Vine's winning line outside number 10? Every paving stone, a parliamentary seat. You remember 2019 when Boris Johnson won all these seats and paved a path to the door of number 10. This time, can Labour turn the blue seats red and send Keir Starmer through that historic black door? Or will the Conservatives hold them off? This is the engine room of our election coverage, where we're keeping an eye on all the election centres right across the UK with an army of reporters. Fiona Bruce and Victoria Derbyshire are with the Labour and Tory leaders. And the race to deliver the first result is always fiercely contested. So we have our earliest risers on the hunt for the early declarers. Hello, I'm in Blythe, where a recount in 2019 stopped them winning. But this time, this team is even more determined than ever. Do we think we can beat Sunderland this time? Yes! Well, let's just see, shall we? Sunderland has won this race many, many times, and they're not giving up without a fight. Here in London's broadcasting house, our teams are poised ready to gather and then verify every single result as they begin to come in. And of course, at the heart of it is Professor Sir John Curtis, who's been hard at work already all day with the exit poll team. And in just a few moments, we can legally reveal the results of all of those calculations. That exit poll will indicate who will be heading here. So the Commons and Rita Chakrabarti will be checking all the numbers. We're feeding all that data into the giant screen now, and in a few moments' time, I'll be able to tell you which seats are most likely to be changing hands. If neither Keir Starmer nor Rishi Sunak win the magic 326 seats, could one of the smaller parties back them up? Ed Davies' Liberal Democrats would love to become the third biggest party once again. Nigel Farage is back in frontline politics with Reform UK, and Kirsty Wark is watching the battle in Scotland. I'm here in Glasgow where we're expecting a night of high drama with politicians using the results in Scotland to argue for or against independence. I'll be joined by the country's senior politicians, advisers and commentators to react to the big stories right through the night. Ready for an avalanche of information and reaction, our political editor Chris Mason is with us here in the studio. So, we're seconds away from 10 o'clock and the exit poll 
first indication of how the night might unfold. More than 20,000 people took part on behalf of the BBC, ITV News and Sky in this first July election since 1945. 326 seats I needed to win. So, here we go. And as Big Ben strikes 10, the exit poll is predicting a Labour landslide. Sir Keir Starmer will become Prime Minister with a majority of around 170 seats. The exit poll predicts that Labour will have captured 410 seats, adding 209. It suggests the Conservatives will have lost 241 MPs, landing on 131. On to the other numbers, the Liberal Democrats up 53 on 61 seats, reform on 13 seats. The SNP down 38 seats, according to this exit poll, on 10. Blyde Cymru are on four, they're up two, and the Greens are up one on two. All the pointers tonight are that Sir Keir Starmer is taking Labour back to power only the fifth Labour leader to win a general election. These are the first indications of what may unfold, but a moment of history beckons. Chris. Blimey, just take a look and take in those numbers. The Conservative Party, so often an election-winning machine, looks pulverised tonight, taking in those numbers. At the last general election, it was Labour that was pulverised, reduced to its smallest number of seats since 1935. At the time, there was talk that Boris Johnson might serve as Prime Minister into the 2030s and that for Labour to win by just a smidgen would requ require a Himalayan climb on their part. And yet you look at those numbers and they have won by a mile. What does this tell you? It tells us a lot about voter volatility. Like never before, more people in more places more often are more willing to change their minds about who they support from one election to another. That's why it looks like we went from a landslide last time for the Conservatives to a landslide for Labour this time. It is going to be quite the night. And Chris, we should remind viewers there's a high degree of scepticism we should apply to this exit poll. They have a very good track record, but it's only over the next few hours that the results will come in and will tell us the real verdict of the British people. But it does seem, as it has done all the way throughout this campaign, that Sir Keir Starmer has done something extraordinary, pulling back Labour from where it was in 2019. Astonishing. When you look at the, the Labour numbers, given where they were, given the extent to which they had been so comprehensively beaten last time. There was lots of folk in lots of political parties anticipating that that would mean they'd be out of power for at least a decade. And yet you look at these numbers, and of course we should insert the caveat, shouldn't we? But given the margin of that Labour lead in the exit poll, there is plenty of scope for that to be out by a reasonable margin and Labour still to be heading for a very sizable, historically big... Uh, majority, where we should insert a few more caveats, shouldn't we, is around some of the smaller parties, not least the Scottish National Party, by dint of uh, the SNP merely standing in Scotland. Uh, there are fewer data entry points into that exit poll, so there's a bit more caution around that, similarly around uh, reform uh, as well. So some, some things to sort of mark our card in terms of caveats, but in terms of the big story, it looks very clear, and we overuse words like historic, don't we, occasionally in journalism. I'll plead guilty to that. But these numbers, if they are broadly in line with where we find ourselves by breakfast time, warrant that label. Yeah. Historic, seismic. Yeah. What a shift in the political tectonic plates. Um, no question that the polls have been all over the place in terms of measuring the size of a potential Labour majority. But if this exit poll, uh, for early indication, if it is right, we're talking about potentially Labour being in power into the 2030s. Well, or not, because who knows if the equal and opposite might happen at, that, exactly. at, the, next, at the next election. And, yeah. and the, the, the recent electoral history tells you that things can swing in all sorts of directions mm. remarkably quickly. But to answer your question the other way, if you like, Clive, if you're a Conservative tonight absorbing these numbers, clearly they are bleak and point to a long, long way back if that's how the numbers 
uh, stack up uh, as the as the hours come. You know, the number of Conservative seats worst in a century. Labour broadly similar uh, in terms of where they are majority wise uh, and indeed seats wise, according to the exit poll from 1997. So to just give you some sort of historical metric, that's that's the zone we're in. OK, Chris, thank you. We're going to be getting much more from you throughout the night, of course. We will. And through the night, we'll be joined by a parade of political guests. Some of them will be in jubilation. Some of them will be very much at the other end of the scale. We're joined initially by Lord Mandelson, who is, You're of course, one already, of the Peter. architects of the 1997 <laughs> New Labour victory. <laughs> And Steve Baker, the Conservative, who doesn't know yet whether or not he has held on to his seat in Wickham. And we will come to them in just a couple of minutes. But I want to remind you of these numbers as they have been revealed by the exit poll, showing Labour on 410 seats, having gained 209. The Conservatives crashing down to 131, losing 241. 61, the Liberal Democrats, an incredible performance for them if they are correct on 53 seats. The SNP crashing down to 10, Plaid Cymru gaining two, the Greens gaining one, and the Reform Party gaining 13. You can just about see them coming onto the glorious prow of Broadcasting House here in the heart of London. But as Chris was saying, particularly when it comes to the smaller parties, we will insert lots of grains of salt at this stage. Small errors, small margins of errors in the exit poll could end up with very, very different tallies for them by the end of the night. So bear that in mind. Yeah, health warnings will be the order of the night until we start getting the real results coming in. Hopefully the first result, possibly in the next hour, hour, so. hour and a half. Who knows? Fingers crossed. Uh, we'll be able to get that to you. Um, of course, if you're going to have a majority to Labour, according to the exit poll of 170, then that means a number of Labour gains, quite clearly. Right around the country, we're going to have a look at some of those that... Our sophologists suggest could be changing hands to Labour with a 95% uh, level of certainty. Swindon South, Darlington, Rutherglen from the SNP. We already had uh, uh, the exit poll suggest uh, the situation in Scotland there. Wrexham, Conservative, now potentially gone, according to our exit poll. Leon Atherton, Middlesbrough, Swindon North as well. Um, and... It's, uh, it's going to be very, very interesting indeed. Well, let's go straight to one of the people who it looks like is heading for government. Angela Rayner is with us tonight from Ashton Underline. Thanks very much indeed for joining us. Um, do you believe these numbers, Angela Rayner? 